Well, I guess some filmmakers just never learn from Rob Zombie. Hey everyone, it's Movie Lover 120 here, and I'm here with a brand new movie review, and this movie review is going to be for the eighth installment of this horror franchise, and so far until until like a week and a half, when the new one comes to Netflix, the final one that I'll have to review until then. And this one is going to be for the second attempt at a prequel to the first installment, except Except this time, it's a prequel to the original series. And that prequel is going to be for 2017's Leatherface. There was actually a prequel in 2006 called Texas Chainsaw The Beginning, and that was a prequel to the remake. This one is a prequel to the original 1974 movie. But anyway, before I get into details... What's the plot of this movie? Well, a violent teen and three others kidnap a young nurse while escaping from a Texas mental institution. Pursued by a vengeful sheriff, a disturbed young man embarks on a murderous rampage that shapes him into a legendary killer known as Leatherface. Yeah, that's the plot. So how was the movie made? Well, for starters, in January 2013, it was revealed that due to the success of Texas Chainsaw 3D, Millennium Films began planning a sequel film be called Texas Chainsaw 4, which was expected to begin filming later in 2013 in the state of Louisiana. Millennium Films chairman Avi Lerner stated that the project was brought in by Krista Campbell and Letty Grubman, and that Millennium had signed on to produce, with Lionsgate distributing the finished project. Executive producer Mark Berg, who developed the sequel script with John Luce, Lucianop and Carl Mazoncom, clarified that it was prematurely announced that and had not been authorized. The rights are controlled by Ma Mazacone and Mainline Pictures. No matter what Millennium says, like they would probably be looking to something to sell at Berlin, but they have no right to announce this sequel. A chance to pitch the film to the studio, dissatisfied with the inconsistencies of the franchise's continuity, he opted to make a chainsaw film that wasn't just another sequel to the original. My, his pitch was always about doing it differently out of left field and making it different. Luckily, the direction they were interested in going as well. The script was approached as a story of identity based on the statements given by Toe Pooper and Gunnar Hansen on how the character Leatherface is entirely devoid of personality beyond the masks he wears and what his family commands him to do. Sherwood chose not to have Leatherface be born as mentally disabled. Finding the story of a functional person that has their mental capabilities reduced to be more fascinating. Producer Les Whedon, stated that the key motives to accepting the pitch were to reinvent the franchise, while also showing how Leatherface came to be. Despite the film's explanatory premise, co-director Julian Maury found it important to maintain some of the lead character's mystique, approaching his moments from his young years rather than a breakdown of his entire past. Yeah. So when the movie was released in 2017, albeit in a limited release and direct to streaming at the same time, unlike the last three Unlike the remake, the remake prequel in the 3D movie, it was also not well received at all. And I think it caused Lionsgate to finally lose the rights to this dreaded franchise. As for my thoughts, this is so far the third worst film of the franchise. For me. I would rather watch Texas Chainsaw 3, which was surprisingly also called Leatherface, over this any day. 
At this rate, slasher killers need to stop getting prequels as it makes them even less scary. I'd rather like maybe maybe like Jason got a prequel, maybe maybe that would have worked way better. Cuz like Jason is a killer you can kind of that kind of has interest in seeing a backstory about Jason. Like that would be a little more interesting. Not like not a second attempt at Letterface or even a backstory about Michael Myers either. Like like I said, this is the second prequel to the series and one that grossly conflicts with the superior film The Beginning. Like, Texas Chainsaw The Beginning, people can hate that movie all they want. But that movie felt like a way better Leatherface prequel than this. Because at least it actually was about Leatherface. Not some teen pretending to be Jediah or Leatherface or some not some violent teen that of course is going to be a serial killer. So yeah, this one we see the Sawyer family lose their children to the state, and they become institutionalized with different names. They escape, go on a Rob Zombie style killing spree, and you have to guess who is Leatherface because we never know who's Leatherface the whole movie. And Bud is the only guy big enough, and he's socially enough, too. But, excuse the plot spoiler that they offer the puny guy's wheel of chainsaw. It was a plastic prop. So, just like... Like, this movie's meant to be a backstory for the original story's Leatherface, but really, all it tells us is his family made him the way he is by literally putting the chainsaw on his hands throughout the movie. He shows no interest in sawing people in two, but by the end... Is wearing a face as a mask. They try making the Letterface character more human, but by the end, he's just a grunting idiot, which makes him anything we learn about his past pointless and boring. And there is a few... I mean, sure, I will admit, there's a few good kills in the movie and some disturbing scenes that are just... But those are just thrown there for pure shock value, and the effects are passable for a modern slasher. Like, the movie still ha does have some good elements... To it, so the, the cinematography is well done and convinces us that the Bulgarian filming locations are in fact 1960s East Texas, and unlike the Platinum Dunes films, I actually felt like Letterface took place in a different decade. Steven Dorff is really good, and as uh, Steven Dorff does give a pretty good performance as the antagonist Sheriff Hartman, who plays the Hellbent, who's the Hellbent Lawman archetype with seen intensity and hatred for the Sawyer family. It's kind of, in many ways, it's kind of reminiscent of Dennis Hopper's. Lefty from Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, except played straight, but still, but still good. I also, I also did like Lil Tyler, Sawyer, Matriarch, Vern, Vernon Sawyer Carson, who conveys this almost Betty Crocker-ish image that barely contains the intense violence and hatred beneath the surface. But yeah, you wouldn't have to cut, you wouldn't really have to cut a lot here to make this movie really recognizable as a Letterface origin story, though. Like, other than, like, so yeah, other than, like, a few gory moments, or maybe some, some chainsaw-like kills, this movie's pretty tame, and not only that, there's, like, well, the chainsaw only kills, like, I think one person the whole movie. One. Or two. Only two people die from the chainsaw in this film. Other than that, this movie's basically just a... Lame and lazy Devil's Rejects knockoff. Because, like, here's the reason why. One, you got a bunch of... You got a bunch of bad escapees going on the road and going on a killing spree. Yep, that's in Devil's Rejects and this movie. And you have Rob Zombie style con Rob Zombie style gore. That's in this movie and Devil's Rejects. You have a violent sheriff that wants to go after the escapees and kill them. That's in this movie. Check. Only difference is, while all of them do die, only one of them survives because he reunites with his family and he kills the sheriff and they all succeed. Only different thing. So yeah, other than that, I would just, if you want like a way better version of this movie, I would, 
I would just watch Devil's Rejects because that's like an actually better version of the shit fest. But, so yeah. And this, not only that, it's, it's even a watered down version of that movie with this one. Because the only, the only other difference is there's like no sexual stuff. Well, Devil's Rejects had a number of that. Well, now, I will admit, Litterface isn't as bad as, like, Texas Chainsaw Next Generation or Texas Chainsaw 3D. It has some potential, but it's very far away of being a good horror film. As this does not even feel like a Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie. Texas Chainsaw Massacre beginning felt like a way better Leatherface prequel than this. Because even a shotgun has more screen time than the chainsaw. Leatherface wields. And is supposed to wield. Hasn't the typical insane vibe and sometimes looks more of a spin-off than a thriller based on a story that we all know. So yeah, that's pretty much my review for Leatherface. So overall, if you want a better attempt at a prequel about the origin of Leatherface, just go watch the beginning, because even that was a better backstory for the character. And if you want an actually better version of this movie, go watch The Devil's Rejects, because this movie and Devil's Rejects are almost kind of the same exact movie. With only a slight few differences with Leatherface. Heck... Heck, even maybe Texas Chainsaw the Beginning should have been a prequel to the original 1974 movie instead of to the remake. But oh well. Anyway, that's it for my review of Leatherface. And if you're wondering how I'm going to rank Leatherface, here's how I'm going to rank it. I'm going to give Leatherface a 5 out of 10. And there we go. That's it for my Texas Chainsaw Massacre review series, and that's it for my review of Leatherface. Until then, until Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2022 comes to Netflix on February 18th, we are finally done talking about Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies. <sighs> until February 18th, that is. But till then, I can finally be done this dreaded franchise until that movie comes out, which will totally suck. Which I could know. It's gonna suck. But. Yeah. But. And now this weekend. can finally get on to my Batman series. Now that Leatherface is out of the way. And then until then. That'll be it for this review. Thank y'all for watching. And if you like this and want to see more. And don't forget to like, subscribe to Movie Lover 120.